us to uh, have fun here with us as well because people do CMA so differently. Um, so I don't want to be the only one up here showing you the way that I do it. So I'm just gonna wait a few more minutes for him to join as well. Who's our iPhone user with no name? I guess they're choosing to remain anonymous. Scary. Today or tomorrow. Sure. This winter. Okay, Jeff, I saw you. Where did you go? There you, there you are. Good morning. Oh, we can't hear you. You guys hear me okay? Jeff. Yep. yep. Can you now hear me I now? Can. I don't know, like yep. talking with someone about something. So my apologies. No, are you in Excelsior? Yeah. Hmm. Um, this might be tough. I think you're cutting out. Yeah. Yeah. We're hearing like every other word. any better or no here let me do this yes. I'll do everybody who's joining us thank you we appreciate your patience as we work through this i don't think the owl is on though so i don't think what 
It's muted. Oh, there it is. There's that. By the way, I love the owl. Literally, it is so much more clear to hear everybody at home. I just wanted to let you guys know that I have noticed that thing work. That's good. And, you know, lesson learned, I don't try to hook these things up in the future without um, Hannah. So we tried. Okay, Jeff, let's try you again. Can you hear me a little bit better now? Yes. Is that better at all? Okay. Yeah, okay. My, my the mic on my computer is not great, so. Okay, it's good now. Thank you guys. It took us a little bit longer to get started, but I think we're dialed in now. So both Jeff and I together are going to show you how we do CMAs. Um, what I was talking about to some of the people in the room before we got started is everyone does them a little bit different, right? Um, so the way I do things could be different than the way Jeff things and there's not really a right or wrong answer on how to do CMAs, but I think it's just great to get different perspectives. We also want to make this interactive. So anything you guys want to speak up and say that you have a trick or a tool or something you use um, that helps you in preparing these, that would be great as well. So with that being said, Jeff, would you prefer that I go first and go through my, the way I do it, and then you can kind of show how you do yours or do you want to go first? Uh, you can go first. It's all you. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go into MLS. Anybody have a property that they're currently working on doing a CMA for that they'd like us to use as the test one? Otherwise, I'm just going to pick a random property. You have a new Red Wing listing? No, not listing. No, okay. Oh, actually, I have a Hastings one. You have Hastings. Um, oh, up to you. You already have it. Otherwise, I'll just pick this random one right here. Okay. This is going to pick this random property. So one thing that I, I know I've talked about before, I know everybody doesn't have this, but I have an iPad as well. So I'll typically pull up my iPad and I'll pull up the old listing and I'll have that here while I'm on my computer. Before I had an iPad, I just printed out the old listing. Obviously you could have a couple of different tabs open. That was too much for my brain to process of going back and forth. So it was just easier for me to have a separate you know, whether that be printed out or like I said, now it's on my iPad um, so that I can keep the information front and center for me on um, bedroom, bath, grass, stall, and square footage. So in this case, you know, I'm going to pick actually a different property, one with pictures. So now I'm addicted to using like multiple screens. I can't you like that, like right off of the Okay, I'm actually going to pick this property in Plymouth just because it has pictures, and I'll explain why I did that. Coming soon, listed. Anybody? That's my iPhone. So in this case, we have a four bedroom, two bath, two stall garage, 2,200 finished square, right? So let's just pretend that this is the old listing. I personally start by taking the listing. I'll copy and paste it. I'll go into search, single family. I'm going to paste this in my search bar. I do coming soon, active, pending, and closed. So this is another thing that Jeff or you know the rest of you may do different. Some people don't include coming soon 
active or pending because appraisers don't use them. I like to use them when I'm meeting with a seller though, to really help show what they're gonna be up against as well, right? So that's just a different viewpoint as well. Some agents don't um, go there because the appraiser is not gonna take those into consideration unless they're closed, but I want a full picture of what's going on for my seller if we're gonna go to market. So then I kind of just start playing around with this. We know that um, it's a single family home. So I'm gonna check all single family. And I usually go to the list date and I'll start with zero to 90 days. What's happened in the last three months, five matches. Okay, here's our coming soon one, obviously. Well, look at this. We have four other matches that are four bedroom, two bath. We're a four plus um modified and two stories now this again is where it gets tricky because people start saying like okay can you compare a two-story to a single family you know again that all i mean some of that comes with and jeff maybe you want to um drop in here i try and stick as most similarly to the property as i can unless i'm not coming up with things that are similar to the property right like if you can't find other two stories in the area well, you might have to start looking at split levels and then making adjustments for that. I know another question I commonly get is, well, how much of an adjustment do you make on that? Well, that's a tough question so, as well. And that's when you start to look at square footage a little bit more too. Yep, and like Blair said, you kind of start to look at square footage a little bit more at that point, price per square footage, bedroom count. You know, I'm always looking at my comparables on, is it reasonable to assume that a buyer that's looking at this property will look at this property as well? When it comes to like a split versus a two story, I would say yes. Ramblers, not so much because generally people who are looking for a rambler want nothing more than one level living, right? So that becomes more complicated in comparing it to split levels and other, other story. Um, so right here, you know, we're all over the board. This coming soon was 439, 399s. So now I'm gonna look, okay. What does this one have that we don't have? This is interesting. We were built in 86, they were built in 85. 2,200 square feet, 2,216 versus 2,204 is a subject. Four, two, why is this one listed at $40,000 more than this other one that appears to be very comparable? So then also when I'm making listing appointments with clients, I ask them, have you done anything to the home since you purchased it? Anything substantial that's going to have, you know, a, a big impact on the price, bathroom remodels, kitchen remodels, you know, I don't necessarily, sometimes they'll go into a whole bunch of things and that can be helpful because if they're starting to tell me, well, we did a roof and we did a furnace and we did this. Part of my conversation when I'm at the listing appointment with them then is going into like, those are great, you know, selling features, but like, because you put an $8,000 furnace in your property, doesn't make your home worth $8,000 yeah, and I'm on this one in particular. I, if I was doing the CMA, I probably would have called that other listing agent and just said because it was only out of market for three days and they're already active to do an inspection. Right. So they might have priced it that high just based on the offer that they accepted too. And I think that's a great point. Right now, I'm looking at pictures because also let's see, like, do we have a brand new kitchen, brand new bath, and maybe a, a you know something else that this other listing doesn't have? So again, this is our subject. I'm looking at pictures here. You know, exterior looks decent, interior looks pretty clean. I mean, some could argue a little dated with the oak, but it looks like newer floorings in there. So I'm going through, and again, looking at the pictures, I won't bore you to death with going through every single one of them. But then the next property was the one that I'm going, okay, how is this one 399 and we were 439. So now let's take a few. I mean, I would say that this is tough. It's relatively comparable in condition off first glance. So I would agree with Blair. I think calling this listing agent and finding out what activity they had. Um, Jeff, you want to jump in here at all on your opinion on this actually turned out to be a good one at random because this is a yes. really great 
like, okay, why are we $40,000 difference? Yeah, I, I don't get too caught up in, unless I can do flip through the pictures i don't get too caught up in like super minute details of a ton of updates and not like i kind of if it's on the lower end or on the higher end like i have a pretty big average in the middle and then maybe can do some adjustments you know when we get down i just initially when i'm grabbing properties i look at like you're doing here style beds bath size like if those fit i'll pull it over and then i, I kind of maybe depending on how many i have you know, if I have three properties, then my adjustment starts. If I have 10 and I got to narrow it down, then I get more to the details of how is the condition updates and all of that stuff comparatively there. But yes, I've done that too, where you, if you have something that looks like it went in multiples, give the agent a call. Usually they're willing to share some sort of ballpark information, you know, do you have multiple offers, any idea how many you had, if you could share, you know, are you over list, the at list roughly, you know, rough what per, roughly percentage are you over list so that might give you some good direction especially this time of year where a lot of your comps are going to be october november december um you're not going to have a ton from the first half of this year but then as we get into this multiple offer situation stuff again you know this is a time of year where where cmas can be a challenge because you're comparing to not only early winter market it was a slow market for us this in the, in the cities too so this can be it can be a little trickier of a time right now to to do that I agree with that 100%. Go ahead, Blair. I guess for that 40,000 difference, too, I'd probably check the way and actually check the map. Maybe one butts up to a park, maybe one is up against a busy street map. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys could hear at home, like Blair said, go into the map and let's see where it's located. And this is where sometimes having um, really good understanding of the neighborhood helps you, right? I'm not saying it's required, but like, for example, where I live, um, our elementary schools are divided. The middle school and the high school are the same, but where that division is, is one part is a way older part of my city. Um, and the other area is newer and the other newer area simply gets more for the properties. Um, and it doesn't have anything based on that elementary school, but I just know that if it falls into that elementary school area, as the older part of my city, and you get less money for those homes. Yeah, I don't. I don't filter out schools um, right away, but it's but it's a great call out to keep an eye on as you look at your comps. If one's one district and one of your comps is a different, you know, if you're on a border, you you may have to include it as a CMA because an appraiser might, but. Um, as we all know, Minnesota is a very school district driven state. So if that could be your 40 grand right there, depending on what board. Um, so if it's worthy of, if you get what you can within school district, great. Yep. That almost like Robin's Yeah. Yeah. This is, is it Robin's Yeah. That one's Robin's Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, yes, like Beth is saying, I might not put a lot of weight on that at the beginning, but these are all factors that you take into consideration as a whole when you are doing the CMA for your property. Um, another thing that I, I don't focus a lot of on this at the beginning, um, but I can't, I, I do generally take a look after I've come to my numbers on something. Um, I'll go into the tax records and um, look at what the AVM is. Now we're at a point where typically now you generally should be at a higher number than the AVM, right? Because like taxes are typically based on a little bit less um, than actual markets showing us right now. Um, so I'm going in here and... <clears throat> Real AVM 436.9. And the range is 409 to 464 from low to high end. So I, again, I don't put a lot of weight into that, but I do take a look at it when I'm all done pinpointing my price point to see, am I in, in that range? Am I, you know, and I would say that the listing agent falls within what the average median price is for this price point. Yeah, you ended up like yeah, right. Like if I would have come in, been coming in at 475, um, I'd be re-looking at this. You know, if I would have done my whole assessment on everything and it's like, I think I should be at 475 and I looked at this, I might've been like, oh, 
where did I go wrong? Um, another thing it's that Cassie, I want to point out. It's, yeah. it's Danielle. I also was taught the confidence score. If it's under 75, it's probably not too good to be able to compare to. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know either. I've never paid attention to that. That's yeah. Good, I mean, I think that that's good. They're just what their confidence is in that price point. So I think yeah. that's a fair statement. Yeah. Is, Again, I don't someone taught me under on 75. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think yeah. that that's fair. I usually use those just to see like for ballparking, right? Like if this, like for this example, if the seller's saying they're thinking 425, 430, and both your AVMs are kind of in that ballpark, it, it gives you a kind of a sense that the, those might be fairly in alignment. Now, if the numbers you're getting are way off from that, or you'll know if the AVMs seem way low or way, way high in, in a certain instance, but uh, then you just discard them. But I, I do, it's worth, I think, taking a peek. I think I found them to be generally in the ballpark a fair of a fairly high percent of the time. Yep. And this is another point where um, you and I could do things completely different. And <clears throat> I've said this before, but when I'm discussing with the sellers about setting the appointment. I don't ask them what they think their house is worth. I don't want to know what they think their house is worth. I want my data when I'm coming in. I don't have a preconceived notion about what they think their house is worth. And I feel like I'm coming in just giving them straight facts and data. I've had other agents who they want to know because if the seller's telling them that their house is worth 550 and they're comping it out at 500, they want to know what they're walking into and what objections to overcome. I see both ways, but I feel like it's easier for me to personally to overcome that objection when I'm like, I had no idea that this is what you thought your house was worth. Like, here's what my data and comps are showing. And like, you can't lie, you know, th that information doesn't lie. So you bringing in that up yep. is just another good point. I'm not saying one way is right, wrong, or the mm -hmm. other. Um, it's just a different way of doing things. Um, that's, I mean, basically, I know we, I didn't go into like the nitty gritty of how I determine value and maybe Jeff will go into a little bit more detail. I kind of wanted to just show you more about how I first started even going about in the system, pulling my comps and figuring out you know, next to the subject matter. And then I start playing around with these numbers. You know, if I'm struggling like a half a mile, especially up by me, that might not get me anything. Like in my city, it does, but the city over where a lot of properties are on acreage, this half a mile, I need, I may need to move this back to a mile, two miles, et cetera. So I continue manipulating these things in here. Um, you know, I might go back 120 days. Um, I don't know if she's on here. Jen, um, Jen Prezioso. Last name right. Jen P. Prezioso. She had, and I think you helped with that too, Jeff, didn't you? Which one? Um, she, she had that. Well, actually, you wrote on it. You were writing yeah, on we it. bought but it. Before any of that. This she one. Had a, <laughs> yeah. There hadn't been a sale. There hadn't been a sale in like six years. Yeah, I I kept going back. Year, and look, if one had it sold in the last, you know, three years ago, it still wouldn't have been a good comp. I was trying to no. find baseline here because I really yeah. couldn't find anything for that people living anywhere near her. So that I was just going in and saying, okay, what's sold in the development in the last year? And I came up with nothing. What's sold in the last two years? And I came up with nothing three years and I was like oh my gosh like it was becoming very difficult to come out that property so again I started manipulating these numbers and in fact those sellers had a number in mind that they were pretty much like we're listing at this and we're not going on um and you know I felt like we were able to justify that number even though we didn't have like real solid concrete comps yeah yeah um, you sometimes you have right. to get creative I mean representing buyers because I my buyers are knock on wood under we're under contract so should, should all go well, well we'll be buying it but yeah I did the same deal and it was in a unique area where any comparable properties range from so it was listed at 400 the range in properties was like three low threes all the way up to 1.1 million um so it was all over yeah. the map I, I really honestly 
we justified the value. I just went back, you know, he had two that sold for 290 back in 2018. And we, I just did kind of a average annual appreciation factoring. I mean, it, it's not, <laughs> it's not scientific. It's, it's very loosely data driven, but that's really how it's like, yeah, I mean, average appreciation, let's say just say seven ish percent. And that puts us in the low four hundreds, you know, low end for low end 400, high end 430. That's what, that's where we're at. <laughs> like, so it worked out. Um, so that, that those numbers seem to work, but. That was okay. another one where actually in the first time ever, I personally weighed pretty heavily on that ABM. That's what I was going to say. I probably would have doubled yeah. it. Because, yep. <laughs> yep. The ABM, I was like, well, there's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of other, you know, this is kind of one where you're throwing it at the wall and hoping it sticks, which I, I mean, not how you generally want to do things and that's yep. not something that's super common that was that was really a one-off um any other like comments on kind of how i go about this before i turn it over to jeff for him to show kind of what he does or anybody um, else who does these that wants to chime in i, I if jeff is going to cover it i don't want to jeff do you do adjustments like within this uh, Yes and no. I, if I feel I need, I have, I don't always do them. No. Um, I can kind of show you an example of maybe when I would like if, if my comps, if you have to, if you have to stretch the criteria, maybe a little bit outside of more where we normally would, you know, if you're comparing significantly different square footage or maybe layout, or maybe you have to get into the minutiae of the features. Uh, yeah, I'll use the adjustments a little bit. So I can kind of show you that a little bit on what, how I would run through it. Okay, sure. um, but yeah, I, but I don't but, always use it. And Alex, like I know I, if I have a split level home that's four bedrooms, two bath, and I'm comping out a three bedroom, one bath, I do generally put about ten grand on the bedroom, five grand on the bathroom. Yeah, yep. so that's what I learned too. So I have down bedroom ten thousand, bathroom five thousand, fireplace two thousand, garage sales garage stalls 10,000. And then when we're looking at that different square footage, I just, this was someone who sent it to me and I just took it and I just want to see everyone's thoughts. Um, but then $80 per above grade finished square foot and then $40 per below grade finished square foot. So I take the above grade, subtract the two times it by 80, throw the number in and I do the same for the 40. Yeah. Uh, that square footage gets hard. You know, because then you're adding bedrooms, you're adding 300 square feet of a bedroom or 200 square feet of a bedroom, then you're adding it in late. It can get, you just got to know where, where you're all you're grabbing from. But yeah, those numbers sound, I mean, that's almost exactly what I would use. So. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Blair. Well, I'll just maybe, maybe you'll say, wait, but have you done enough? I just feel like I wouldn't get too married to any of those numbers yeah it, i mean that could vary from city to city county to county i wouldn't uh, i mean really looking at other like properties is the best way to do it and kind of like, i feel like once you've gotten a feel we've all seen a ton of houses we've done cmas a lot i wouldn't get married to those numbers. yeah i, would, I don't i i would 100 percent agree i'm more comparing apples to apples on the house than looking at this data grid of how I should be um, coming so and again I think that that also just comes from to Blair's point experience in doing it right like it's harder as a new agent to start gripping gripping this well, um, and I think too at that I share point something I think real quick? trying to spend based on yeah hold on based on what you're seeing and then asking someone else who's done it yeah it's so a way to go than having like strict like 10,000 per bedroom 80 dollars per square foot because I think then you're doing way too fast. Yep. I agree a hundred percent. To I'm not either, but to Blair's point, um, you know, feel free, any one of you running a CMA to contact me. I've sat with many of you either over Zoom or just over the phone where I'll pull the property with you. We kind of talk through it. Hey, I found this comp. Did you find that comp? And even me, as long as I've been doing this, I have agents that I reach out to that I have a property that I'm having a really hard time comping. And I'm like, what do you come up with? What did you come up with? And if we're within a couple of thousand, you know, even five to $10,000, I know we're on the right track. 
but like there was a property one time where I um I was at like 450 and the agent that I had he came back at like 650 and I was like whoa mm -hmm. you know where are we off and we brought another agent in so like I, my point with that is you're not always going to be an expert on these and you are going to run into properties that you just can't seem to come. And then there's times where like, Nate, I know I've sat with you and you, you know, you were like, oh, I'm having a heart. You know, I sat down and I was like, oh, 425, this is what it is. And you're like, what? You know, and I probably ran through it pretty fast, but like, that's just kind of where I'm at mentally with running these. So um, you get there too, but I will... I usually ask, first. still, I usually ask at least one other person. And then yeah. just even for them to dig on it super hard, just like ask them. Yeah, Blair says he still just asks for a second opinion. I don't think that that's a bad idea, Um, especially if you are way off on numbers with the seller. Yeah. Like now you're not just coming in with you as the only opinion. Like, hey, I had some colleagues take a look at this as well. Yeah, and to your point too, when you said that you don't ask them, I usually have my number ready, go to the listing appointment. And before I, I'm like, okay, I'm about to tell you my number. Do you have a number? Yeah. And then when they say that, then I make it explain. I make them explain to me why. Right. Because then I usually have my like reasons for why mine is what it is. So far as are way off, then I'm prepared to explain that, and it's less of a shock when they're way off. Right. Okay, Jeff, I'm gonna let you take over. Cool. Um, I don't know if anyone has one they want to do. Otherwise, I. I don't know if it helps or not. We, I have one that's never been on the MLS that we could do. If, if anyone has a preference or I have an old, old one we could do, it's really up to you guys. If anyone has any thing they want to see. Let's do the one where um, it's never been on the MLS. I'm curious. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I, I, good one because the, well, you have no reference point to start from. Yep. So this, I mean, we're going to do my grandma's house because she might be selling her house. So, um, so I've been in it, obviously. So that's where you're just going to have to like, at a minimum, like Cassie said, you're going to have to at least have them explain to you maybe some updates or whatever. It's going to be a lot more difficult probably without having physically seen it. So you might have to adjust your listing process procedure on something like this. You know, that's a different conversation, but obviously it's much easier. You know, there's a few ways you can do it. You can either have seen you know, set up an appointment to go see the property, then do a CMA with your listing presentation. You can um, obviously get basic information from them. Um, you can go to your listing appointment with probably one or two. I've, I've heard of people going to listing appointments with three CMAs preloaded. So, you know, kind of if it's in great condition, if it's updated, if it's not, they kind of have three CMAs, you know, but then after they do their home tour, then they just pull one out that says, okay, you know, this is what I'm thinking, you know, and the client doesn't know. So, um, so we'll do this house in Bloomington, uh, Zenith Avenue sells. So what I do first thing, either search for the address, not correct. Yeah, why would it come up right? Say. <laughs> All right, guys, that one didn't come up right. Come on. Let's try. Oh. Hold on. I'll get it here. Sorry, guys. I don't know why I wouldn't pull up. Find it the old fashioned way. Go to Grandma's house. Uh, Lake, so I'm just trying to find a, I, I like to do a radius on the map. So contrary to just differing from what Cassie does. Um, here we go. Um, so I like to pull a radius. So I just usually start, it's one of these right in here. So I usually start pull a mile radius from the property. Um, again, depending on location, you got to be careful if you're getting in, 
getting on others like this one, obviously, you know, keep an eye on you're getting on other sides of freeways, which can change things. You might be bopping into different school districts here. So just to know that. So then one that helps me physically see geographically where I'm at. It helps me physically see, okay, are we, you know, is the house right here where it backs up to American Boulevard or, you know, maybe backs up to a busier road or is it more in a, in a neighborhood setting? Um, so I start with that. Then I pop back to criteria, same as Cassie coming soon, active, pending and closed in the last six months. Um, again, that's just straight up um, appraisal criteria. Uh, then I just, I kind of, I kind of pick with the criteria and just as we keep an eye on how many matches we're getting down here. Uh, so I know this one is a three bedroom. So I usually just start fairly close to it and see. So I know this one's a three bed, loosely three bath, two car. Okay. So now we're getting down maybe into two fewer results. Okay. So then I might, that's when I just, I, I manipulate criteria just to try to generate more. So this one, well, let's just try two to three bed, two to three bath and maybe just take the garage off or do one to two garage. Okay, so now we're getting into 38 matches. Okay, that gives me a bigger pool to draw from. Then usually I'll, I'll dive into total finished square feet. Um, depending on the property, depending on the density of the area, like if you're pulling a house in you know South Minneapolis where they're all very similar in, in how they're structured and laid out, you know whether they're two-story, one-story basement, keep an eye on above ground and below ground because as we all know, those typically comp out differently from an appraisal standpoint. Uh, I don't always, I usually just work off of the total finished square feet. Um, and then I just throw in a range. So I actually don't know the exact square footage of this one, but just for example sake, let's just say it's 2000. So I'll throw in like 1700 to 2200. Let's just see what that does. Okay. So that narrows us down to eight. Uh, let's just bump this up one more. So then I just, I just went, so sorry. So, that's kind of what I'll start with. I just try to narrow in. So that now I know it's going to give me 11 comps that are very similar beds, baths, garage, and square footage and within that one mile radius. So I don't know how appraisers do it, but that's where I start. Um, you know, if you wanted to, depending on, you could certainly throw in school district. I typically don't as a starting point. That's just something I keep an eye on as I look at results. Um, shoot, I should have done this in the CMA feature course, right? Um, so then I'll just, I come in here and look at, look for closest matches, um, depending on where you have. So again, this is where I like to kind of use that ballpark. So let's just say for argument's sake, I'm thinking it's like three, 350, 375 is what I'm looking at. Off, more often than not, I'm going to, I might pretty much right away refine stuff. That's like, you know, this is fairly close, but just for argument's sake, I'm going to throw out the stuff that's like, the outliers. So your highest and your lowest pretty quickly, I'm going to discard those just based on price. Like I know mine is worth more than 300 and I really don't think mine's getting to 450. I'm going to throw those out. So then that's going to even further, sorry, this should be in the, in the CMA format. So my apologies. Um, or if I should jump over quick and can, get in there, still, still do that, Jeff. just throw those all on the CMA. Let's throw these all over. See if that works. Uh, let's do me. So, sorry, this, this is how you should do it. You go in here, uh, you know, pick the pages you want. I keep it. I keep my minimal the, those we can, that's in the, for another day. Um, so we're not going to have the subject that doesn't have any MLS data. So you're going to have to auto fill. Um, you're going to have to manly manually fill it. Right. So. And this is uh, this parlays over to then when you get the summary, so you know what you're carrying comparing to. So, uh, I do so want to also point out here. Story. I think this is where a lot of agents. What was that, Cassie? Well, I was just to say, here's also another thing. I know a lot of agents do this CMA format that you're doing. I don't. Yeah, I don't do this at all. I print out. Tanner doesn't either. Tanner actually probably learned that from me. Yeah, um, but I I print out the MLSs and bring the. You know, I'm a little bit old school, if you will. Like yeah, the sure. CMA it's turns CMA. out, it turns out pretty and it's very presentable. And I'm not. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Like I'm not arguing that. I'm just again pointing out the differences and how yeah. people do things differently. I don't. 
the CMA. I printed out the old MLS and bring those to the center. Yep. Yeah, and there's no, I just like it because it averages it out a little bit for you, it does a little bit of math. So, yeah, there's no wrong yeah. way. So, like I said, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to throw out the, the outliers here right away. So, the lowest, the highest for sure are, are out. Um, you know, cause this is the, the particular property it's, it's moderately updated. It's not super recently updated, but it's got the white kitchen. It's got a nice master bath, um, you know, has a nice porch. So it has some of those features. Um, but I, I wouldn't say it's like fully remodeled in the last two years where it's going to be at the high end and it's not a dumpster fire where it's going to be on the low end. So that's where I just, you know, again, your property may dictate one of those. If you, if you think yours is the best on the block, then, then obviously don't throw out the high end ones. Um, so then again, I'll just kind of continue to narrow maybe based on some of these criteria. So I want it to be as close as possible. I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to do a, potentially do an adjustment for, for 300 square feet. So I might throw that one out. So I, I'm hoping with some of these, if I'm assuming it's 2000 square feet, I'm going to, I really like some of these that are right off the bat that are closest. Right. So I might throw that one out. Uh, then when I get it down to, you know, between, four to eight, like kind of skim through the pictures like Cassie does. Um, and I, I usually cruise through them pretty quick. These pictures look terrible. Okay. So like not updated, not good pictures. This thing's, you know, I, I just don't see this one comping. So I, I'm going to toss that one. Um, okay. So then I'll just, this one's not going to have a lot of pictures. Okay. Decent condition, not a lot of pictures to work off of. I, I don't know for sure. Okay. But it's a good comp. It's a three, two, it's the same square footage. So I might leave that one in for now. If I find a better comp that has better pictures, maybe I would throw it out, but I, I may leave that one in there for the time being. Um, so I usually cruise. I don't, you know, again, it's just really quick. Um, like I said, I don't get too much into the minutia until we get narrowed down to the final three, four, five to, to pick my four to five tops, best ones. Um, then I can look at, okay, what, you know, are the kitchens similar? Does it have an updated kitchen? This one has a porch, this one doesn't, you know, cause you can adjust for some of that stuff. Um, okay. This one's fine. Yeah. Nicely. looks like updated kitchen. Okay. I'm looking at the big things. Okay. Yeah. Potentially updated bath there. Standard basement space interesting basement bath fine no big deal okay so this one has some updated features and qualities okay specs okay it's a little bit smaller one less bath uh, it's kind of in that ballpark range i'm looking at so that's for sure one i'm going to hang on to so that's just kind of what i i cruise through um as i try to narrow out some properties so let's just to speed this along say that one was for sure we didn't like um okay and let's just say Let's say this one wasn't any good. Okay, so now we're getting down in a range. We've got four or five, you know, it looks like, what do we have there? Six. So, you know, continue to narrow those for whatever reason, whatever criteria you think it compares or doesn't, whether that's square footage, whether that's size. Um, okay, so then what I'm going to do is I pop over into the end here and I kind of keep popping back and forth this so that I narrow in. Um, this is where I like this format um, versus just printing it out. I, I like basically this summary sheet. So obviously this, this section here, this blue would normally be filled out. If you, if you pull it from an old MLS listing, this will fill out for you. Otherwise I would have manually would have manually put all this in there, but then you asked, you know, what your property is to this. So I know my, my property is a three bed, three bed, three bath. Uh, but we're getting an average of 370, 375 with, the averages of all these are three bed, two bath. So now, now I can maybe work off my adjustments. Say, okay, well, you know, the comps are around three seventy, one less bedroom on average. Yeah, maybe we are looking at three eighty. Maybe you, maybe you push on, you know, you push up from from this median or this average. There, you know, the average is right around two thousand square feet. This is where I like this because it just does all this math for me. Um, you know, so it averages out. So okay, the average square footage is about the same. And then work off this number based on some of the amenities that I may know. Okay, we've established has one more bedroom. I know this particular property has a really nice three season porch that I, I believe add, adds value. It's it's you know all sliding glass doors. Um, you know it's nicely maintained and updated. It's a great little space. So you know, maybe we kick on another five for that. None of these 
you know, maybe none of your comps have that, you know, you have to kind of keep an eye on that sort of stuff. So I, I keep it fairly generic. Um, it, you know, I, I don't like to get too far into the minutia of like nitty gritty, like, Oh, this bathroom, this bedroom's up, uh, excuse me, kitchen's updated in such a manner versus mine. Um, you know, I keep it generic updated versus not, uh, things like that. And then, yeah, then you can obviously add pages, to this market analysis, you can certainly, um, you can add all the comparable properties. So you can add that page. So then it, it will give them that page as well. Um, yeah. So then it has, it has like all those this. printed I mean, out I, I, specs. Yeah, there's definitely benefit to doing it this way, especially, yep. you know, if you want a nice, neat, tied up presentation. Jelena, I know you're on here. Do you have anything to add? Hi, hi, I'm driving. Sorry. Um, so I oh, guess I am happy to chime in. I just put it in the comments. One of the things you had mentioned, Cassie, was that um, sometimes you can't find a comp in an area. And I found that InfoSparks can be really helpful for establishing trends in an area where you can get an idea of, you know, if it's been two years since a house sold and you're not sure how you would price it now, you can break it down by the neighborhood or um, kind of what the trend is in that zip code or that school district for uh, how homes have increased in value over a period of time. And so I will look at that data to see you know, how that uh, fits in with the AVM score as well in terms of market increase over a period of time if there hasn't been a, a home, a similar home sold. And that could be more helpful in a situation where you're pricing out like a rambler and all you have for comps are two stories or something to that effect. Right. So. Yep, so just another great tool to have is InfoSparks and, and looking at the data on there as well. Jeff, did you have anything more that you wanted to share? No. Uh, yeah, obviously, I think it's been touched on. If, if you're running into a property that's either unique or you you know comps are coming up, you get in kind of this. I always just start with a generic version of uh, appraisal criteria. That's what I start with. Uh, but then I, the only thing I would say is like, let's just say I, I, I pull this up and for some reason zero or maybe only one comes up and it's not a good comp try not to manipulate too many criteria all at once of the appraisal criteria. So like the first thing I would usually do is, is go back, go back a year, you know, let's add a few more months, see if that generates more options. And if it doesn't, because then you just get, then you have to account for a lot more. Or if you're, you know, let's say you're, you're comping something that sold ago, that also was three years away. Then there's a lot of very, it's just a lot more variability to the process. So that's just start, start narrow and then work your way out until you get what you need. And then obviously the, the more you, you um, deviate from like appraisal criteria is the more kind of figuring and calculating, you're probably going to have to figure out. And that's when you bring in, you just bring in help and you got to do it. Um, <laughs> brother, it's your one or your 500th one. You, you got to bring in some help on those unique ones. It just has to do it. Can I, can I add just one yeah, more I quick thing? Circumstances here. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, so just something that I did, especially while I was a solo agent is, you know, I wanted to kind of get insight into the mind of an appraiser so I could use some of that process or thought when I was pricing out properties. So if you're working with a buyer and they get a copy of the appraisal on what they're purchasing, ask if they will share that with you and just start studying some of those and see um, what an appraiser does for valuations because uh, Alexa had mentioned a bunch of numbers and I would say, you know, that's probably in line with where appraisers were maybe four years ago, but I think that those numbers have really changed since COVID and the way that costs have gone up and there has to be some factor for inflation as well and what the value of a fourth bedroom is or an additional bathroom and a house. So, you know, just start looking at kind of like how an appraiser does some of those cost adjustments and that can be helpful too when you're starting to price things out. 
Yeah, I think that that's a really valid point. I was also going to mention that there um, has been a couple times in my career where, I, again, there's the two step versus one step. I've always been a one step listing listing person. I like to go in with my data, my information, find the listing agreement, get out. Um, but there's been times where I've had to do a two step where I'm like, look, your property is so unique and I am just running into a wall here. Let me come out and visit, get a feel for your property, go home, run my data, and then I come back. So that is if you're really running into, um, you know, not finding stuff and you have other people looking over it for you as well. And like everyone's kind of coming up empty handed, that might be the next step and maybe even grab a team member to come with you. Carter just recently. That. did you right. guys want to look did, did anyone want to look at the um adjustments page at all did we want to take a quick peek at that or no i think was it danielle mentioned that I, we don't have to it's i can certainly help someone offline too but Whatever is comfortable with you guys, just thank you guys all for just chiming in and helping me out. Oh, Juliana, that was all great. And just thank you guys so much oh, for building up this team and really helping. You bet. We're here to help. Um, I don't know if you, this is the uh, the adjustments You're page, well. guys. This this is again why the, like, it, this is an easier way to lay it out if, you, if you're not comfortable doing it kind of on the fly and just kind of running through if it's not. I use this they're not close like if i have to deviate off my criteria and i've got three quote unquote comps but there's some some more than typical deviations on whether it's square footage or features or beds baths um that i have to make adjustments for this just helps do some of the math so you can kind of scroll oh, why is it not i don't know why it's not giving me all the options There we go. So again, so it'll tell you at the top what your property is. And then it, these are what all these ones are. So if you wanted to mess with all of them, okay, we already established, you know, you call five grand for a bathroom, you do five, you'd go in and type that and it would adjust for all of these. So again, it can be cumbersome. That's where I just like to take the average and just do this adjustment once at the end. But if I had, if these were all very varying properties there was not a lot of continuity between these properties and how they compared you know they were compared in some criteria but not all that's when i would go through here and pick at some different stuff um you know it has all your features up here how old it was you know i don't do all of them just the bigger ones um total finished square foot maybe i would put an adjustment in there above grade below grade potentially as we talked about sometimes maybe you'd take it you have a perfect house that where the house is a match but one of them's on an acre and one of them's on a half or uh, excuse me, a quarter acre, maybe make an adjustment there. So uh, you just use some standard and then it'll give you kind of your averages down here. So I don't always use this. Like I said, I only use that in, in unique situations. So if you get into a situation where you're having trouble finding it, that's definitely something you can lean into, but I'm happy to help work through that if need be. Uh, another Thing I want to point is, oh, is Matt and I were talking about Zestimates before we uh, started this training. And while we chuckled about them, it is actually something I will tend to look up as well. I put zero weight into it, but I only like to know that number because guess who's inevitably going to bring that up? The seller. The client. <laughs> and I just like to, yeah, the client. So um, it's just, again, I don't put any weight on that. I'm not suggesting any of you guys do either. But just kind of knowing what that zestiment is in comparison to where you are um, just brings that back in line with because inevitably the client's going to bring that zestiment up. Thank you for whoever is playing this beautiful music. We are enjoying that. Um, all right, you guys. I think it was Sarah. Oh, lovely music. And actually, it was set a great tone. <laughs> All right. Um, if nothing else, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm here to help with any questions. I think um, Jeff and Angelina and other member of the teams are as well. So don't hesitate to reach out. If you're stuck on a CMA, um, I'm always happy to help. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thanks, Cass. See you at noon.